It's Thursday, June 9. In the headlines, regional travel is a major concern for tourism minister. Regionally, Suriname Airways cancels several flights due to financial woes. And in sports, sanctions will be coming after Jadko failed to test Tina Clayton. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I am Simone Absalom Gale. Multi-destination tourism is high on the agenda for Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett. He made the revelation in the upcoming episode of PBCJ Presents. Mr. Bartlett says Jamaica is driving the conversation on this matter. He says it's time for more collaboration between Caribbean countries. He notes that transportation is at the heart of this. So access across borders is critical. So first thing we need to do is to fix that issue of regional transportation to enable uh, air services and also maritime services so we can move people and traffic and, and goods and services. Mr. Bartlett says governments have to look at the access between countries and see how they can make it easier for regional citizens. We need to look at the protocols that determine movement border control issues, visas, how do we uh, deal with the issue, for example, of creating um, a central uh, area with, where pre-clearance, for example, takes place, so that a flight comes into Jamaica and everybody is cleared, customs, immigration, so it becomes domestic to Trinidad, Barbados. When quizzed about the cost of travel regionally, Mr. Bartlett had this to say. Once we fix the transportation issues, then the cost will be fixed because now we will have volume and the critical mass will enable uh, contribution from everybody to be less. So we will end up with lower rates all around with more people contributing to cover the costs. And that's an important consideration, but it, it has political uh, implications and value. And I think that if CARICOM were to mean anything to the region, it must be a vehicle for fixing that access problem. Our online checks revealed that a flight to Barbados from Jamaica costs 809 US dollars, while using the same dates for a flight to New York is 689 US dollars. To find out more about Jamaica's tourism product, watch this week's episode of PBCJ Presents on Friday at 8 p.m. on our social media channels. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport Olivia Grange says her team remains committed to supporting Jamaicans who are within their sector. Giving an update to members in the House of Representatives on Wednesday, Minister Grange says her latest move is a partnership with the Ministry of Labour and Social Security to create a trust fund for sports, culture and entertainment practitioners. I will also be engaging the Administrator General and the Minister of Justice to see how we can establish a trust fund similar to what we have done for the Coral Gardens, the survivors of the Coral Gardens incident. And I am engaging in discussion with the Ministry of Social Security to get funds to top up the 20 million that I've identified to provide funds for these persons who have served Jamaica and who are now having difficulty. Minister Grange says she will be establishing a committee to oversee this venture. She says it will include athletics legend Mike Fennell and former Olympian Juliet Cuthbert Flynn. The minister says further information will be available when the fund is launched. According to Minister Grange, her ministry has provided over $406 million in grants in the last fiscal year. Also included assistance to retired and active athletes and sports personnel in the amount of $11 million from the Welfare Fund through the Sports Development Foundation. The Caribbean Community Climate Change Center says 
climate change represents the greatest health threat to Jamaica, the region, and the world. And according to Executive Director Dr. Colin Young, millions are vulnerable to the effects of climate change. His comments came during a Youth Leaders Forum organized by the Caribbean Development Bank, titled Caribbean Youth for Innovation and Resilience. It was further revealed that Five Seas is working with Trinidad and Tobago and the Bahamas to implement a Green Climate Fund project aimed at developing climate-resilient health systems. In the Bahamas and similar, similarly in, the, in Trinidad and, and Tobago. So, for example, in, in the, um, the Bahamas, one of the deliverables from that project is going to be an electronic public health surveillance system that will improve the efficient monitoring and management of health issues amplified by climate change because we will hear about some of these uh, in a bit in terms of uh, the incidence of cholera, the incidence of dengue, incidence of malaria that tend to accompany the floods that are increasing in both frequency and intensity. Um, and similarly, as it relates to uh, the disasters and early warning systems that will help our policymakers to be able to better adapt uh, to the effects of, of climate change. Dr. Young re-emphasized that the Caribbean is one of the most vulnerable regions and given the projections, expectations are that things will get worse. The frequency and intensity of floods, of droughts, of powerful Category 4 and 5 hurricanes are going to increase. And not just sequentially. What is happening now is that these hazards are happening in parallel. They're happening at the same time. And so it's stressing our health systems, our ability to cope um, on the mental health side, on the physical side. And so really this conversation is absolutely vital because as a region, we have to grapple on how do, are we going to deal with this. The center is here to help countries access resources to try our best to adapt to the effects of climate change. Persons who are visually impaired should be able to identify the new banknotes that will soon be in rotation. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, says the new notes will be issued with features that account for that group of Jamaicans. The consultation was done with the Jamaica Society of the Blind. They have signed off on the, on the, um, the mechanisms that are being used. The material that is being used is also one which is resistant to wear. Senator Johnson Smith also joined the calls for banks to pay more attention to persons with disabilities. Who need to be able to have reduced risk access to not only ATMs, but of course to whatever new facility is provided. I know some take it into consideration with their mobile apps to make sure that they are sound enabled, which has a risk factor unless you're wearing an airpiece like um, Senator Morris, like you are, because clearly if you are less savvy and you are using a voice activated feature in the hearing of others, that is quite an exposure. So it's something that has to be thought about very seriously and very carefully. She says the matter will come to the forefront with the rollout of the BOJ's new digital currency, Jamdex. Well, there's only one bank now that issues or that is capable of issuing the CBDC. Other banks are on different um, ladders, I would say, or steps of the ladder towards delivery. Steps, steps of the ladder. Uh, and we do hope that they are listening today and that they too will take good note. That when we speak about financial inclusion, it should not only be an economic denomination, it should be an, a social denomination that means that we're trying to ensure that every Jamaican, every Jamaican, whether with disabilities or not, has access to financial services. Time now for the Business Report with Danita Rodney. According to the latest reports from Petrojam, motorists should see an increase at the pumps in gasoline and diesel prices effective Thursday, June 9. With a $4.50 increase, 87.90 octane gasoline will be sold for $215.89 and $220.91 per litre respectively. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $218.51 per litre. 
Continue with a $4.50 increase, ultra low sulfur diesel will be sold for $221.25 per litre and kerosene will be sold for $192.20 per litre. Meanwhile, propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $76.94 per litre, up $1.35. And butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $85.47 per litre after a $0.68 cents decrease. Remember to be on the lookout for price changes as marketing companies and retailers will add their own markups to these prices. The Bank of Jamaica says it has engaged with various players in the commercial banking sector in an effort to reduce technology-based frauds such as smishing, vishing, and phishing. The engagement comes as a response to the recent attack on customers of the National Commercial Bank, which resulted in a significant loss of approximately $18 million. The BOJ is advising banks and other licensees under the Banking Services Act BSA, to implement the necessary mechanisms and controls to protect and mitigate against cyber attacks and other fraudulent activities. They are also encouraging the banks to increase their vigilance and be proactive in educating the public on ways to protect themselves and their money. Members of the public are being reminded to call their banks to verify any authentication of any communication before revealing sensitive information. Now for your market updates. In foreign exchange trading for Wednesday, June 8th, the US dollar sold for an average of $154.89, the Canadian dollar ended trading at $124.41, the pound sterling traded for $196.19, and the euro sold for an average of $167.99. The following reflects the movement of the GSE indices in Wednesday's trading session. The GSE index advanced by 4000 and 26 points to close at over 300,000 units. The junior market index declined by 32 points to close at over 4,000 units. The combined market index advanced by 828 points to close at over 300,000 units. And the All Jamaican Composite Index advanced by 4,841 points to close at over 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 103 stocks of which 47 advanced, 39 declined and 17 traded firm. Stocks advanced for Access Financial Services Limited, Berger Paints Jamaica Limited and Cargo Handlers Limited. Stocks declined for 1834 Investments Limited, Barita Investments Limited and Blue Power Group Limited. Trading firm were 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited, AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, and First Rock Capital Holdings Limited USD. The following companies represent the overall volume leaders. Productive Business Solutions Limited 9.75% Cumulative Redeemable with over 3 million units Elite Diagnostic Limited and JMMB Group Limited 7.35% Cumulative Redeemable Preference Shares with over 2 million units in regional stocks in Trinidad and Tobago, Clico Investment Fund was the volume leader with over 4,000 shares, followed by Calypso Macro Index Fund with 268 shares. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, Government of Barbados Bond Series B was the sole security trading over 193,000 shares. According to a report from the World Bank, global growth is expected to slump from 5.7% in 2021 to 2.9% 2 in 2022, significantly lower than 4.1% anticipated in January. Director of the World Bank's Prospect Group, Ian Cosé, has warned of the risk of the 1970s-style stagflation persisting in coming years amid soaring commodity prices and low growth. Stagflation is a concept uh, that basically describes you have high inflation and weak growth. It is a toxic mix. For economists, it is the type of problem difficult to overcome. Now, uh, you need to, of course, find a way to increase supply so you reduce price pressures or to reduce demand, again, to reduce price pressures. But both of them, of course, have its own challenges. Most people think about stagflation as a problem specific to the US. 
It's a global problem. In market data for oil, oil prices hovered near three-month highs this morning after parts of Shanghai imposed new COVID-19 lockdown measures. Brent crude dipped 14 cents or 0.1% to $123.44 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude was down 23 cents or 0.2% to $121.88 a barrel. And that was the business report on PBCJ. I'm Danita Rodney. Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, believes the ongoing summit of the Americas will not accomplish many of its goals due to the non-participation of several countries in the region. Dr. Gonzalez himself has boycotted the summit due to the non-inclusion of some nations. The United States government has made an error. It is true that they have rolled back recently some of the more egregious follies um, put in place by the Trump administration in relation to Cuba. But those were done unilaterally. And they don't even take us back to the Obama period. And I was there in Panama when President Raul Castro of Cuba was there. Even when President Trump was in office, uh, Cuba was invited to the summit in Peru. Now we are rolling back the clock in, in a way which we ought not to. We should have a conversations. A con we have conversations with everyone. We can't be fighting, as President Obama had said, old 20th century battles in the 21st century. Is the region now divided, do you think? No, I think that it's, it's really what is a tactical approach. There are several heads of government from CARICOM who have gone there to Los Angeles, and they will make their voice heard for the principle of inclusion. It's just that I think that the matter is so large a principle that we ought not to have gone. As Grenadians await the publishing of the final voters list for the June 23 general elections, officials say they have received several claims and objections that are being investigated. More from GBN News. Grenadians had seven days to object or make any claims such as the misspelling of names or to point out individuals who passed away or any other errors within the list. That window of opportunity closed on Tuesday. Supervisor of Election Elvis Maureen said a number of objections and claims were received in various constituencies. Those claims as of yesterday, based on report reaching us, because it's not at that level yet, we know that we received some objections, I say objections slash claims, St. George's Northeast. We had some there. Um, it, it, it bought around 60. St. John is the other place that seemed to have quite a few. I think it's about 70 something based on the, the last count. And we have outside of that, but it's, it's, it's not significant in terms of numbers. Moraine explains that they are now in the process of looking into these claims in order to provide a more updated and accurate list. The financially troubled state-owned carrier Surinamese Airways has cancelled several flights, leaving hundreds of passengers stranded in several destinations, including Aruba, Curaçao, the Netherlands and Miami. The decision by the airline to cancel the flights comes even as the government says it is doing everything it can to save the airline, which seems to be sinking further into financial problems. The SLM is in debt of approximately 75 million U.S. dollars, with the government blaming years of mismanagement by the board and wrong investment decisions by previous governments. The government, the sole shareholder of the airline, wants to declare the company bankrupt. Reports also indicate that foreign airlines that were hired to operate the flights for the SLM have not been paid, further compounding the situation. In Belize, three people, including an infant, were rescued after being stranded at sea when their kayak capsized. Two adults were making a frantic attempt to swim to land with a toddler in hand, as we hear from this Channel 5 Belize report. A daring rescue at sea on Tuesday afternoon was captured on camera. Antoine Param, a tour guide in training, was on his way back from Key Cocker along with a group when they came across a child and his parents stranded at sea. We were on a day trip from Key Cocker. We had a day trip to Key Cocker, you know. 
and we were our trip was done and we were heading back to San Pedro. <laughs> right? On yeah. on the way back, you know, we were just observing, you know, the the water to look out for logs or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. Then from afar I get to know this about from five hundred yards away. We get to see some floating object, mm -hmm. you know. So we thought it was like a big lock that we could haul it out of the water and pump it. But when, as we get closer, we observe that it was, uh, you know, it was actually uh, human. The parents and their infant were attempting to get to a nearby island from Kikokker in a kayak. The vessel capsized several miles away from shore. The family attempted to swim back to where they left while the child was being carried by his father. The lady told us that her baby, you know, to go and save her baby, so that's when we, we looked over to the right and we saw the man and the baby, and that's when we went over and uh, read their aid to them. Further afield, the European Union's agreed to provisional plans to institute a universal charger connector for smartphones, the USB-C. The EU says that the requirement is an effort to reduce electronic waste as well as make life cheaper and simpler for Europeans. Apple, whose devices primarily use its custom-made lightning connector, has fiercely opposed the idea. Al Jazeera's Natasha Butler reports from Paris. With so many small electronic devices on the market, there's a constant demand for chargers. Shops like this one in Paris sell the three models that are available in the European Union, but soon they'll only need to sell one, because under new EU rules, manufacturers will have to produce the same standard charger. It's a very good idea. If something works, then it's better for us. We're here to sell. The new legislation means that across the European Union, phone chargers and small electronic devices will all have to use the USB-C connector. That means that the micro USB and the lightning become obsolete. US tech giant Apple had fiercely opposed the idea of a standard charger. The company's devices mainly use its custom-made lightning connector. Apple said that a universal charger would stifle innovation and create waste, as people would be forced to discard cables. But the EU says that the measure is aimed at reducing waste. In sports, Olympic double sprint champion Elaine thompson Hera is one of 10 Jamaicans who will line up at the Rome Diamond League meet today. thompson Hera will be on the line in the 200 meters and is joined by her Olympic relay gold medal winning teammate Sharika Jackson. Olympic bronze medalist Megan Tapper is joined by Brittany Anderson and Daniel Williams in the 100 meter hurdles. Geneve Russell and world champs bronze medalist Rochelle Clayton will compete in the 400 meter hurdles. Christopher Taylor lines up in the 400 meters, while Nigel Ellis takes on five Americans in the 100 meters. Natoya Gould will look to improve her time in the 800 meters race. There must be consequences. That was the word from Portfolio Minister of Sport, Olivia Grange, as she made her presentation in the sectoral debate on Wednesday inside Gordon House. More from Carla Thomas Hewitt. While giving the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission JADCO kudos for its recent strides in anti-doping practices and adherence, she said the agency let down the nation. JADCO's recent action or inaction has cost the country a world record. I was there at National Stadium at the Carifta Games during Easter when the talented young athletes Serena Cole, Tina Clayton, Brianna Liston, and Tia Clayton won the under 20 by 100 meters relay in the astonishing time of 42.58 seconds. This was an impressive movement on the world record of 42.95 seconds that the Clayton sisters, Serena and Kerika, had set in August last year in Kenya. It was the first world record that I have ever witnessed on home soil. Yes. And the fact that it will not be recorded as such is truly disappointing. Minister Grange further outlined the rules governing a broken world record. The World Athletics Competition rules say an athlete must submit to doping control immediately after the end of the event, where the athlete has broken or equal a world record. 
The rules further require that in the case of a relay world record, all members of the team must be tested. She shared the findings of the international investigation provided by the chairman, which led to Tina Clinton, one of the forerunners, not being tested. The failure to test one member of the relay team was because of an apparent existing best practice at JACO not to test an athlete twice within 24 hours in competition. But the chairman also reported that checks have revealed that this best practice is not contained in the JATCO rules, neither in the international standard for testing, neither the water rules, and is not contained in any internal memorandum or document in the JATCO files. It appears that it was an instruction originating, at least, from the time of the previous executive director. The chairman's investigation also found that JATCA applied its intended practice over and above what appears to be explicit instructions from the J3s. That is to provide six tests per day with testing being done on any athlete who achieves a national or world record. Ms. Green shared with Parliament the next steps to be taken at JADCO. A disciplinary subcommittee of the JADCO board is being established to take the appropriate action in this matter, and there must be sanctions. Two, compulsory retraining is to be done of all technical services staff on the rules of competition governing the major sporting organizations. A list of these organizations is to be agreed by the board. And three, JADCO will review all procedures or protocols which would require an event organizer or body requesting in-competition testing to provide rules and specific instructions in relation to that organization in a timely fashion prior to the event. The minister also offered an apology to the young athletes affected. The board of JADCO has survived many calls for its sacking over the testing matter. The previous under-20 world record of 42.94 still belongs to Jamaica, set by the team of Cole, Tina, Tia, and Carissa Hill, which was set last year at the World Under-20 Championships in Nairobi, Kenya. Meanwhile, Minister Grange also announced increased testing for national and international footballers. JADCO is now a part of the CONCACAF project and will increase testing of national and international footballers. Additionally, JADCO will increase testing of athletes who qualify for the various disciplines at the upcoming Athletics World Championships and the Commonwealth Games. Chai Hope's 12 one-day international century and second in four innings went in vain as the West Indies lost the first one-day international against Pakistan by five wickets on Wednesday. Deciding to bat first, Hope's 127 fired the Windies up to 305 eight of their 50 overs. He faced 134 balls and struck 15 fours and a six in a high quality innings, which formed the basis of the Caribbean side's second 300 run total in as many matches. Shamar Brooks chipped in with a stylish 70, while Harris Roaf was expensive, but finished with four for 77. In reply, Pakistan reached the target on 306 for 5 of 49.2 overs, thanks to 103 from skipper Babar Azam that included 9 fours. Player of the match, Kuzdil Shah ended unbeaten on 41 from just 23 deliveries. Azari Joseph took 2 for 55. And that's the news on PBC Jamaica. Remember to follow us on all social media pages at PBC Jamaica. Thank you for watching.